tutorial for Minecraft 1.2.1.3.2. Uh, sorry, this is Psyguy 1121, and let's go ahead and get started. So, um, in the last tutorial, I talked to you guys about how to make our new furnace block face the player when placed, and in this tutorial, I'm just going to talk to you guys about how to add the generic furnace GUI to our block. And this is super super easy, but it is a required step in to creating a custom furnace GUI. So, anyway, um, really easy. The first thing we need to do is up here in the public class block red furnace extends block, change block to block container. And you'll see it's giving us an error because we need to implement some methods. Um, and we're just going to go do those down here. Uh, block container basically makes it so that you can store um, data in the block about inventory, what the block contains, like a chest is a container block, a furnace is a container block, a, um, trying to think of something else, a dispenser is a container block, etc. Um, okay. So anyway, now the first thing we need to do just to get rid of this error and to make it actually Store data is public tile entity. So this will create a method that returns tile entity, obviously. Create new tile entity. World world. And so just return new tile entity. I misspelled entity horribly. And actually we want tile entity furnace with parentheses. And there's, so now our block will contain an inventory, aka what it is currently smelting, and eventually we'll create a um, tile entity red furnace so that we can do our own custom furnace stuff, but just to set up the basics for now. Anyway, uh, the next method is quite a bit longer and it's a bit more complicated. Uh, that is public boolean, not newlean, boolean, on block activated, world, world, int x, int y, int z, so the coordinates of the block, int par4, I don't know what that one is, so I'm not naming it. Um, if you actually looked at the furnace code, you would see world, par1, world, int par2, par3, par4, um, all that and I'm actually just renaming the ones that I know what they do. So, entity player, player, int par 6, int par 7, int, or actually no, it is, let me look at my notes, float par 7, float par 8, and and I just typed and float par 9. So if I didn't name it, I don't know what it does. Um, so don't ask in the comments, please. If, it, if I discover it's really important, I'll cover it in a later tutorial. So anyway, in this method, we need if world dot is remote and I don't know really um, what the is remote method does. I see it a lot, um, but it's I don't know what exactly it search for. It searches for so set to true when you are a client connected to a multi multiplayer world. Okay, so yeah, so if you're in a multiplayer world, return true, and the server will handle it. Um, I'm going to cover multiplayer mods later, so don't worry about that, but you do need the if world dot is remote. Else, tile entity furnace, and we'll name this t entity, equals tile entity furnace world dot get block tile entity 
x, y, z. And if t into t is not equal to null. So if this exists, uh, then player dot display gy furnace and t entity and then return true. So basically what this is doing is it's checking to see if you're in a single player world or if you're in a multiplayer world, sorry, and then it's just getting out of the method if you're in a multiplayer world. If you're not, then it's going to go ahead and create the tile entity furnace object for this specific furnace and then get the data from the inventory of our furnace and then it's just going to display our GUI. So now if we run this, um, let me fit the game to the box. Sorry there's no noise by the way. Uh, when I do, I'm not very good at routing audio uh, so when I do put in the game noise, it always ends up being to where you can hear like my voice out of one ear, the game audio out of the other ear, and all that weird stuff. So anyway, um, you'll see we have all our wonderful furnaces from the last tutorial. Oh god, music. I, I don't really like Minecraft music. Anyway, um, so now if we go up to the furnace, just right click. Oh, did I disable right click? If I right-click on the block, it's not working, so I must have done something wrong. And I did. So, um, yes, debugging live float on nine. Um, public boolean on block activated. Hmm. Um, sorry about this, by the way. So, public boolean unblock activated. Did I spell activated correctly? I did. Easy way to fix this. I'm just going to go into the furnace block. Oh, get away. And go to the unblock activated method copy that. I'm just going to copy this. This is sort of cheating, but oh well. And I'm going to paste that in and rename this dot. Actually, this is Z, Y, O. Oh. You know what? I added an extra parameter accidentally. So anyway, um, let me just, sorry about that, by the way. Just, yeah. Anyway, now it should work. So, fingers crossed. Sorry about that. This video is going to be a lot longer because of it, unfortunately. So now you'll see we have the basic furnace GUI. Um, it'll work just like a normal furnace. If I put in a bunch of iron and coal, then it'll work completely normally and smelt everything correctly. So, oh, um, yeah, that's, that's an issue there and we'll fix that in a later video. But um, anyway, so that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye.